This is Pastor George Pearsons. I want to welcome you today to this very special edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Faith for our nation. One week from today, we are voting. We as a nation are going to the polls and we are allowing our voices to be heard. But there are so many out there who are overlooking this election, this midterm election, which is so important. We are in a time in our nation like none other. And we're walking in a place with God like never before. The Jerusalem embassy has been set up. The blessing has been invoked on this nation. And before I introduce our panel today, I want to read something. It's a word from the Lord that Brother Copeland had during the uh, November 4th, 2014 election. And this is what the Lord said. I have a new birth for this nation. I have planned a nation that right at this moment, you don't have any concept of what it's like. Hear my words, America. I have a new nation in my heart and in my mind, and you don't know what it looks like. The door is open, step through it, and together we will bring a new nation on the earth, one nation under God that trusts in God. Here we are today, experiencing a new birth for America. I welcome my wife, Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons. I'm so glad that you are here with us. And then Buddy Pilgrim, we're glad that you're on the broadcast with us. And Paula Thank White you. Kane, we're grateful that the Lord has brought you to us. Thank I you. have just been so, during all of these broadcasts, this week, last week, just sitting here listening to you, lis listening to both of you really talking. I, I feel like it's a, 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 I'm in college in a, in a political <laughs> class. But the Lord has really brought you into a place in this administration of, of prominence, and, and Donald Trump has not just brought you in as, say, the, the, the token Christian. No. You've known him for a long time. He has a heart for God, and we are experiencing a new birth for America. It is absolutely amazing, Pastor, and I, I just reiterate to everyone, voting is right around the corner, and this is your time, your voice. It matters. Our president... <clears throat> Um, I've heard many people who have served with Reagan, served with Bush, served with people who were strong Christians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They said there has never, ever been an administration that has been so faith friendly. Right. Um, I love what Robert Jeffress says. We weren't looking for a Sunday school teacher. We were not <laughs> looking for a pastor. Yeah. Um, he has the courage when he says promise made, promise kept. If yeah. we look at Israel, and the embassy being moved to the capital and being recognized in Jerusalem. We can just, we have listed so many things over the last week and, and I don't think we could take a year's program to begin to explain it all. <laughs> oh my. And I, yeah. I sit there and every day watch them go to bat. I mean, watch them from early in the morning to late at night. It, literally on a day, it, it will be nothing. I can tell you on a day in the White House, sometimes I'll see, you know, he'll go in early in the morning and start and he starts on his broadcast and then he goes into the office and he's got meetings all day or dinners and lunch and this and that and he's having his meetings and then he'll get on the plane and go do a rally and mm. get home 11, 12 <laughs> and, and he's up at early in the morning doing wow. it again and he's doing it with as much energy and passion and fervor and purpose yeah. and yeah. belief and our prayers matter every time someone comes and they say to he and Vice President Pence, we're praying. Yes. You just don't wow. know how wow. much it energizes them. And what we've got to give him is some co-laborers in the House of Representatives yes. and in the U.S. Senate yes. and yes. the governor's offices all yep. across this country yep. to help him accomplish what he set out to accomplish. That's why this midterm election is so vitally important. And we have to sow our seed. That vote that we have is a seed that we're sowing. And, and we're going to reap a harvest of whatever we sow. And if we don't sow that seed of our vote, we're still going to reap a harvest. But I believe in Jesus' name that we are holding on to 23 seats in, 20, the, house. in the House. Yes. 23 yes. seats in the House. And we are adding nine more seats yes. in the Senate. I gonna, we are going to help the president Amen. do that. Yep. And, and the importance of that, and we have said, and I think it's worth repeating it. I don't think we can say it enough. Because often when you have a, people will go vote on a big ticket. So when it's a presidential run mm -hmm. and a presidential race, they'll get up and vote. Not enough, but still they'll right. get up and vote. Um, but on a midterm election, people tend to think, oh, it's not as important. It could be more important. That's right. And buddy, let's explain why. So let's say that people decide, well, 
President Trump, and I, my, I don't need to get up and go to those polls. No. Hey, what, uh, what's going to happen, buddy? <laughs> well, what's going to happen is Democrats would take over the House of Representatives. They might take over the Senate as well. And they're going to obstruct everything that he's going to try to get done. And they're going to try to implement policies that are antithetical to what I would say are Christian beliefs, Christ, core Christian values, the most important of which we talked about in particular on Tuesday of last week's broadcast, life. Yes. There is ultimately, Pastor Terry, you said it so well, there is no single issue more important to a Christian, and really it should be to any person, the than the life of the unborn That's child, right. the life of the innocent. But all of these other issues matter as well. And God's Word speaks to life. It speaks to Israel. It speaks to jobs in the economy that we talked about yesterday. Because judges. Judges. We talked about judges. There's, ju there's discussion of judges in the Bible and direction there. And judges impact all of these other decisions because they make rulings that affect all of these other areas. But even jobs in the economy and the things that we're talking about this week, capitalism versus socialism, we're going to talk about today, those are important because they lay a foundation of whether we're going to live in a country where we are independent, except for our dependence upon God, or where we become dependent upon the government. Th this is huge. So when you say they would obstruct, because this is what I have found and I find like, our president follows what he promised. The reason that he became president is the American people said this is what we want. Mm -hmm. It's what yes. we believe in. We saw the unprecedented percentage of the evangelical community. However, there are things that cannot, when he says obstruct, they, they won't be put in place, put in law without the right house, without the right Senate. Mm -hmm. And so without the, without the right people to go along, let's look at tax reform since we're going to go into economy and stuff. So we had what we thought, this is a huge victory. We got a great, great provisions in tax reform. But there were some things that we had to, what I say, compromise didn't or get didn't get in. And the pure reason on that, though it was a tremendous victory, I mean tremendous, I mean it, when you think tax reform had not happened for 38 years, yes. so here we are operating by tax code mm -hmm. that had not been reformed. 38 years ago we didn't use computers, you know, <laughs> 38 yeah, years yeah, ago yeah. we didn't have cell phones and we had such an antiquated, such an old system. So he brought that and, and he reformed it. But some of the things that didn't get in was because we did not have the enough votes. I know that one of the things Larry Kudlow, who is the chief of uh, President Trump's Council of Economic Advisors is wanting to do is to index capital gains, for example. Now, you might wonder, well, why in the world are you talking about that and what difference does it make? Well, Ronald Reagan famously said, inflation is the cruelest of all taxes. Because if you have tax brackets that aren't increased over the years for inflation, you get a raise because of inflation and you move up into a next tax bracket and it eats up all of your raise. Or on capital gains in particular, you buy an asset in one year, you hold it for five, six, seven, maybe ten years and you sell it. Well, the majority of the gain that takes place there may be only inflation, up. yet you get taxed on that inflation. So I know one of the things President Trump's wanting to do is to index capital gains for right. inflation. And that's a good thing, and it's not just going to benefit the wealthy, it's going to benefit everybody who owns stocks out there, and it's going to benefit everybody who works for a company that needs to sell an asset so they can reinvest those dollars into a new building or a new piece of equipment or something like that. And the importance when you said, okay, well, the company's getting be um, benefited, but we saw immediately yeah. how many companies gave bonuses. I mean, yes. there were billions yeah. of dollars that went out in bonuses so that y so your worker that was maybe making 30,000, 50,000, 75,000, they felt an immediate impact yes. in their pocketbook. Yeah. So people might not understand. They say, well, I'm not, I'm, I, what does it matter if the Dow is up? What does it matter? I'm not in that. But if a company does good and you're working a job, then they are immediately returning a much of that benefit and much of that bonus yeah. back into people's pocket on yeah. an everyday basis. Yeah. So this economy being stimulated, the um, we'll talk about the the regulations and we, let's look at that versus. Okay, we believe, and I think God's belief absolutely. Listen. I lived in a trailer, okay? <laughs> they called me trailer trash. But I found out that God's in the recycling business <laughs> and that what others call trash, He calls treasure. So it doesn't matter yeah. where you start. I know what it is to go, 
okay, how do I get out of this? I, I knew what it was to, to be in difficult times and not make a lot of money. And I remember my tax uh, year one year was like $7,000 and I thought I was probably rich because it's better than the 3,000 the year before. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, but I thought, you know what? The government's not my source. Right. And even a company is not my source. God is my That's source. Amen. That's right. And God will give me innovative, creative ideas. There is more money and opportunity available through what He's done for small businesses, yes. for women. It, this is very important because we looked at a, and I'm, I'm, maybe I'm speaking out of the line as a woman here, so um, I might have to reach over to Pastor Terry right now. Oh, and, I'm, I'm <laughs> so, on your side. So, uh, right. But it is, a, it is a fact, and this goes into immigration. This is going to hit global. This is going to hit everything. But women invest 90 cents on the dollar yeah. back into the family. I think men invest about 17% is what they say. Now, it could be a little bit higher. That's a, that's a global set. But we know that the greatest investment back into the family is a woman. Amen. So when, the more we prosper small business, which is predominantly women, then the more we strengthen the family yes. with things mm -hmm. e economically so that we don't have to abandon our children yeah, we can have home businesses, small businesses, companies, and we just see story after story. This benefits everyone yes. across the board. And, and I've got to say this. If you think party doesn't matter, and, and historically that's what we've said in the church. We just look at the man or the woman. We don't look at the party. But really the parties do matter because when you're... When you choose to elect a Democrat representative for the House or a Democrat senator, they're going to eventually vote on who is the Senate Majority Leader in the Senate. Correct. Or who is yeah. the yeah. who's the Speaker of the House, who's going to control everything that goes on in the House. And so they're going to vote for either Nancy Pelosi or somebody even more liberal, or they're going to vote for Chuck Schumer in the Senate to run that. They're going to control the agenda for those two houses. And the thing that I want you to understand, really, and, and this is sad, I wish it wasn't this way, but over the last few years, the Democrat Party has gone far more liberal, far right. more to the left. They even have many candidates now. They're openly running as socialists. And I want to give you a definition of socialism Good. versus capitalism. Capitalism, a lot of people don't even understand. If you ask them, what, what is capitalist? I don't really know. Well, capitalism is nothing more than an economic system in which the capital resources, that is the means of production and distribution of goods and services, mm -hmm are owned privately and operated privately rather than run by the government. Socialism is an economic system in which those capital resources are owned or either predominantly controlled by the government. Now, some people like to criticize businesses. Big business got all of this control yep. over all this money. Think about what would be even worse than that. You take all of this money that's in the business environment and instead of having literally millions of businesses around the country that are controlling it, you got a handful of politicians in Washington, D.C. You talk about a concentration of power, it's the yeah. worst possible thing that could happen. It's scary. I yeah. mean, outside of, if we look at the last uh, several years prior to us, our Christian values, um, I mean, churches, the, the religious liberties that were taken from us, marriage becoming a religion, things that were forced on us, um, I mean, people who uh, did take a stand yeah. and IRS came after them in unprecedented. If you look at a, a small percentage of our population who for a long time have controlled seats of power, if they also yes. controlled that seat of power mm -hmm. with all the money, my yeah. goodness. Oh, my goodness. Could, I, I mean, I, I, if people would understand how important this is. So it is It is the, the president's agenda, which is the American people's agenda, which certainly, as a believer, is my agenda, um, according to biblical beliefs and values. But that, that, the House, the Senate, getting the right people in place, what you just said, if not, we're just, we are spinning our wheels, yes. and we aren't able to get things done. But what could be even worse is if they have control yes. over something. Um, I, don't, I don't think sometimes people really understand what that would mean. I will go as far, and I'm sure somebody will take this clip and put it out there and it'll go viral. They tend to do that. <laughs> um, but I'll go as far to say when I begin to really look at everything, it went through my mind. I never spoke, but I went, could it be that we would become an underground church? Now, some people would think, that's insane, that's crazy. 
But the way things were headed, it was headed in that direction. It was, I believe, that that, and they go, no, oh, that's not real. That's not, you know, every day we wake up and get to go to church and yeah. worship God. We better be thanking the Lord and thanking God for those who are in rulership in righteousness yeah. every I, I was, day. I, I was sharing with you earlier today about the article from the USA Today yes. about op-ed from uh, an individual whose family was able to get out of Castro's regime in Cuba. Yes. And they were, they're Democrats and they were concerned about the direction that their party is going. You were talking about it going more and more left. It really is. It's headed in that direction. Castro's and regime was socialist. It was, it was a socialist government and they were, they were deeply concerned that people, their people, the Democratic people didn't understand what socialism really, really Correct. was. And I think if people had that picture and that image of what it really represents, the definition that you just gave, they would change their minds. But they were, I mean, they were running after Bernie Sanders. Well, it gives us. And, and had no idea what he stood for. It, it, I think this is really important to camp here because when we say, especially let's define they, a lot, we know statistically that a lot within the group of millennials or a lot within yeah. certain group went, okay, this looks good. It's just, I think of Israel. Let's go back to the Bible for a minute. They said, give us a king, give us a king. And God's saying, you don't want a king. This is a theocracy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. Give us a king, give us a king. We want to be like the other nations. That's right. You don't want a king. No, give us a king, give us a king. And finally, I think God says, I'm going to give you what you want, and you're going to find out you don't want what you got. Yeah. And so they get Saul and they become like the other nations, which was not the best situation for Israel. Yeah, yeah. And thank God for his mercy and his grace and his love for Israel and his love for his people, of course. We see David rise up and we see things. But I think sometimes we think, well, we want that. We don't want to have the student loans. Yeah. We don't want to. I, I honestly didn't have the education on some things. I thought, well, Obamacare and this must be, like I said before, half the nation or something. It was six million people. When we're looking at over 300 million, there are so many things that when you look at, because people's argument, and I even was in a political, you know, politics and church, uh, I, I guess we would call it a debate <laughs> from, <laughs> from both sides. Yeah. And they said, well, if we took our calculator and if we did this and took all the money from the churches, we couldn't take the care of the poor. I don't believe that. I don't either. I no. think if the church is the church, when God said in his word what we were to do with the poor, the widow, with everyone else, I think right. if we become responsible people, responsible families, responsible churches and do what we are to what do. What less poor. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. God's word works. It is not the government's job for us to feel an entitlement of you take care of my bills. Because when they have that power, they have power over That's everything exactly else. That's exactly right. And there's no place in this book where it suggests that government should take care of the poor. The church's Thank job you. is to take care of the poor. It's not the government's job to take care of the poor. And the best way the church takes care of the poor is when private individuals that are members of the church are blessed and prosperous in the work of their hands, where they become Psalm 1 people, where whatever they do prospers. Those principles are all throughout the Bible. And socialism presents a false argument because not only does socialism do what I said a minute ago, it has the government controlling all of the business entities, which is really this massive concentration of power and wealth. It promises that everyone else will be equal. Well, they will. They'll be equally poor and equally dependent upon the government. But there is a, a utopian promise in socialism that we can all be equal. And that's not even biblical. The right. parable, I, I mentioned the parable of the pounds and the parable of the talents yesterday. Two very different parables, okay? They both teach the principle that you have a responsibility to do something with what you've been given. But the parable of, the, in Luke, the parable of the pounds in Luke, there were 10 people, each one was given an equal amount. Each one was given one. That speaks to equal opportunity. Right which is what this country is all about. And then each one earned a different amount and they were rewarded based on what they earned. Equal opportunity, different outcomes, rewards to pro proportionate to what they earn. That's what capitalism is all about. The parable of the talents is different. It said each one was given a different amount according to their talent, exactly. according to their ability. So that's like phase two of this. Once you've proven yourself that you know how to handle something, God will bless you with more. That's what a capitalistic system does. It's a biblical system. So have you, in your discussions with the president, have you discussed this capitalism versus socialism issue? Yeah, I, I see it all the time. I see 
him and Ivanka and his advisors and those around him. And I, I say uh, people that have worked so hard from the tax reform um, and policy. I get to work a lot with policy, both domestic, some international, speaking from the, the view of faith inside. And he, he is a businessman. Yep. He understands yep. capitalism, yep. and so do those around him. Um, absolutely have we discussed it, but it's it's more seeing it in action. You know, it's yes. more what you yep. see in yep. an everyday. I don't even, if I start reading my notes here and we start looking at how much, this is my simple way of thinking through things. So they one day we were in a listening session and I said, if it, one of the senior advisors came in and said, if this president will be known for anything, it will be deregulation. Now, yeah. I think he's going to be known for a lot more. <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm thinking deregulation, okay, explain that a little deeper to me, <laughs> you know. What does this mean? I know he's deregulating this and this and this and all this stuff is, and we're coming out of the Paris Court Agreement and a Paris Court, and we're coming out of this and the ICC and all that. So tell me what that meant. Someone leaned over to me very simply, and they said, well, Paula, under previous administrations, if you wanted to build a road, it would take 14, and they were just giving a hypothetical example, 14 different, um, you know, things you would have to go through to build that road. Yeah. Agencies? Yeah, agencies and restrictions yes. yeah. and just layers, layers after layer. And now when you want to go to build that road, it's going to take two. Not 14, yes, yes. because they're taking off all the restrictions of just yes. what was nonsense, kind yeah. of, what was yeah. unnecessary. I looked at something, I'll tell you, um, and I've got to be a little bit careful here, but I did, I, I've done a lot of global outreach throughout my life and done a lot of missionary work through Africa and stuff. So I kind of traced back some government money. And I found uh, there were places that would get maybe ten thousand dollars or so when it it came down to the actual work but i went well, well what happened because a million dollars left and it was agency after agency after agency after agency mm. you know it wasn't necessarily I illegal but it wasn't ethical yeah. in my opinion and so what president trump has done is said nope you know, we, we want to do the best, even when Vice President Pence went to the UN and was able to immediately bypass so that we could get Christian. Um, we were able to get money immediately into uh, Christian organizations that were in the Middle East and that were able to rebuild and people could rebuild their lives. And, and there's so much. I know we're going to get into immigration, but, but what is happening? And Pastor George Gowood, but he has, by regulations and trade and the economy, not only made it better for the American worker, but for the world. Amen. Well, let me ask this. We've got one minute left. And let me see if I'm right about this. What we can do where this socialism is concerned, we're the Democratic Party, we, we can exercise our vote to go vote yes. and to make sure that doesn't happen. Proverbs chapter yeah. 1 says, My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent if they say, Throw in your lot with us, be a sworn brother and comrade. Let us all have one purse in common. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Restrain your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. Wow, and what that a passage. is the word Amen. of the Lord. So our feet need to run to the voting booth. There it is, plain and simple. Go vote. I'll be right back. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord. actually hits the ground. And while we're sitting there, I remember uh, a young man years ago was telling me about, and it, it resonates over this, it's real simple, it's nothing like they were saying, but regulations, government regulations. How many of you buy lettuce? And we had some lettuce tonight. How many of you ever bought a head of lettuce? Okay. There's 25,000 pages of regulations that have to be passed before a grower can sell lettuce in this country. There's a lot goes into that head of lettuce. Uh, 25,000 pages. 
One person's not doing that. That filters through different agencies. And so we see, uh, you know, gasoline, there's so much tax on gasoline. Uh, I think uh, someone was telling me like in, uh, I don't know, maybe you know Greg in Kuwait or Iraq or some of those places. I've talked to some soldiers that were over there. Uh, gas is only about 15 cents a gallon because the wells are right there. So by the time we get it, you know, it's just regulation after regulation after regulation. So these things are important to understand. Uh, I don't claim to be a politician, but I'm trying to pay attention to a lot of these things. And I really pay attention to how much money we get to keep. Uh, I'm, I'm a capitalist. I like money. You like money? If you don't like it, it won't stay at your house. It will go. So pay attention on all these things. Ask questions. Be informed. Uh, I'm, I'm good with people asking me questions. I'll try to tell you what I know. And if I don't know it, I'll get somebody that can help you. We've met Buddy Pilgrim before. Uh, last year, we got to meet him and visit with him for a few minutes. Uh, I've met George and Terry before. And uh, never met Paula White. But I enjoy your ministry. But anyway, uh, Buddy Pilgrim actually does a lot of stuff like uh, Dave Ramsey on uh, financial, financial classes and courses and things. So he's got some good stuff out there. Questions? Pat? Yes. On the, she is his faith advisor. So Carter, you can turn us off, off the... Yeah, spiritual advisor. 